Welcome to Token Post Daily News Briefing, where we provide the latest and exclusive news on blockchain and cryptocurrency. On our top stories, we have Jihan Wu's resignation, NVIDIA's class action lawsuit, and Bitthumb's ironic internet security license. Stay tuned for more. I'm Yoro Sun, and this is your Daily News Briefing. NVIDIA, who was previously reported as the worst player of S&P 500, is currently facing a class action lawsuit over shareholders' losses. According to the official announcement by Shell Law, it has been stated that the company NVIDIA has made false and misleading statements when attracting its investors. NVIDIA claimed that it was equipped with a top-tier capability to monitor and make rapid changes according to the volatility of crypto market. More so, the company also stated that the decreased demand within the mining market would not pose any threat to the company. However, despite such claims, with Nvidia's stock price dropping over 50% during Q4 of 2018, the complaint raised a class act to demand answers from the firm. While details on the procedure as well as the demand is yet to be released, the law firm is telling investors to join the class action to receive the necessary compensation from Nvidia. During the weekend, the resignation of Jihan Wu shook the crypto world, hinting a possible collapse of the Bitmain empire. According to O'Daily, a Chinese local media, it's been stated by an unknown source that Jihan Wu, the CEO of Bitmain, would resign from his current position in the coming days. The article further went on to state that Bitmain already has ceased all of its mining operations and has decided to sell its used anti-miner S9s. Just last week, Bitmain was reported of conducting a 50% layoff which included the developers of BCH. For all miners, it has been a tough crypto winter, and it is no news that the financial difficulty Bitmain is facing has forced to reduce its operation. However, with the situation getting worse for the mining giant, would we be seeing the end of collapse of the Bitmain empire? More are to be seen in the coming future. Token Post recently reported news on BitThumb's win over an alleged hacked lawsuit. The main argument behind the decision was that BitThumb was not responsible conforming to the legal framework of a financial exchange. Today, the operators of BitThumb have announced that the exchange achieved the Information Security Management System, or ISMS license, from the Korean Internet and Security Agency. Last year, the Korean government has recommended exchanges with over 1 million visitors per three months to achieve this license. It was indeed a thankful gesture in protecting the crypto traders in Korea. However, the irony was that while the government asked exchanges to achieve this license, they did not subject the exchanges to financial laws when it came to exchanges' failure in keeping customers' assets safe. Of course, the efforts of Bitham of achieving the ISMS license is commendable. However, with the law enforcement denying the financial responsibility of exchanges when it comes to the customer protection, how would the customers trust them with their assets? Now, this is neither the fault of the government or the exchange. It simply shows how the South Korean crypto market is a difficult current to navigate. However, being a crucial player within the crypto ecosystem, the existence of a proper ground for operation seems to be in great need when it comes to the exchanges in Korea. An interesting survey was conducted by APTC and PAN News, suggesting that more than 80% of Chinese citizens would consider buying crypto as an investment. Now, the exact procedure of the survey was not released to the public. However, some of the notable results were that 98% of the respondents have heard of cryptocurrencies, while 59% were not investing in crypto just because of the complicated procedures. Another worthwhile mentioning outcome was that the respondents did not feel the need for crypto payments as service as Alipay and WeChat Pay are popular within the nation. The Chinese government retained the stance of allowing and incubating blockchain while regulating crypto investments to protect its citizens. Along with the recent ban on airdrops, the concept of crypto was thought to be assumed something of a taboo in the nation. However, it seems that the people actually indeed are interested in the concept of crypto and that they are willing to give it a try once the procedure gets a bit easier.
We bring the latest news to you. That was your Token Post Daily News Briefing. I'm your host, Hun, and thank you for watching.